Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas for Informatica World 2018 exclusive coverage of theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE with Jim Kobiela as my co-host this segment. Analyst at Wikibon, it's looking angle on theCUBE. Our next guest is Fira Shanti, who's the Chief Data Officer at Lipo Digital Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, Thank very excited to be here. Thank you for coming on. But people who don't know, before we came on camera, you and Jim were talking in the native tongue. Apakabar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Um, so I know you're Chief Data Officer, got a lot of questions, because we love these conversations, because mm -hmm. we love data. But take a minute to explain what you guys are doing, what the company is, what the size is, and, and the data challenges. Okay. Maybe let me introduce myself first. So my name is Fira. So my role is the Chief Data Officer. So responsibility that actually is cover for the big data transformation for the Lipo Group data. So Lipo Group is actually part of the one of the largest conglomerate in Indonesia. So actually we serve like a middle class for the consumer services. So we are connecting uh, I think more than one one twenty million of the customers. So what's Lipo as a group doing is actually we are like do many things. We are the largest of the hospital in Indonesia, largest uh, supermarket. We do like department stores, coffee shop, cinema, data centers, IT business, like we own bank as well, insurance, news, cable TV. What else? Uh, <laughs> You have a lot of digital Man, assets. Mobile, mobile <laughs> All you have to do is drive down any street Man, in Indonesia <laughs> and you see Lipo everywhere. Yes. Yeah, education as well, <laughs> like from the kindergarten to the university. So that's why it's like a lot of diversity of the business that owned by Lipo. But recently we, we like endorsing a lot in the digital transformation. So we're releasing a new mobile apps. It is called OVO, O-V-O. So actually, it's like centralized uh, loyalty e-money oh. to like providing the priority deals to all the Lipo Group customers. So they're not going to maintain their own membership loyalty program. It's going to use like the OVO. So it's not only like being accepted by Lipo ecosystem, but also like to the external ecosystem as well. So we start to engage with the uh, merchant partner, which is like today maybe it's already like reaching out. Uh, 30,000 uh, mission outlets. Well, I'd like to get Jim's perspective. I want you to, to connect the dots for me because the size and scope of data, you talk about deep learning a lot. Yeah. And so, let's connect the dots because we heard a lot of customers here talking about being having data all over the place. So, mm. how does deep learning, how do you, well, how do you catalog everything? Mm -hmm. So if you have all these diverse assets, I'm sure they're different silos. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection? How are you handling? Okay. Definitely it's not easy job to do, you know, like implementing big data for this kind of a lot of the diversity of the business because like how to bring all of this data coming from the different source, coming from the different ecosystem to the single analytical platform is quite challenging. Mm. The thing is we also need to learn first about the business what kind of the business, how they operate their business today, how they run the hospital, how they run the, the supermarket, how they run the cinema, how they run the coffee shop. By understanding these things, so my team is responsible to transform, like not start from the collecting the data, cleansing the data, transform the data, then generate the insight, right? It has to be an uh, actionable insight. Then like, we also not only like doing the BI things, but also like how from their data, we can like developing kind of the analytical product on top of the technology, big data that we own today. So what we deliver is actually beyond the BI. So of course we, we do a lot of things, for example, like we really focusing in doing the customer 360 degree profile mm -hmm. because that's the only reason how we really can understand our customers. So today we, we have like more than hundreds of customer attribute attaching for individual customers. Mm -hmm. So I can understand what's your profile for the purchasing behaviors, let's say what kind of the product that you like. If only let's say for the data coming from the supermarket, I know what's your brands, your favorite, <laughs> whether your uh, spending is declining, 
uh, how you spend your point part of the loyalty program then many things so by understanding very deep like this so later on that we can like engage with customers in the better way in providing the new customer experience because we not only let's say like providing them with the right deals but also like when would be the right time we should connect to them providing some them that they might need so that this is the way how from the data we try to connect with them with the, our customers yeah provide a more organic experience across the yeah, entire exactly. portfolio of lipo brands yeah, throughout yeah. the ecosystem yeah, yeah. so it doesn't feel to the customer and so it isn't simply a federation of brands it's one unified brand to some degree yeah, from the customer's yeah. point of view delivering value that each of the individual components of yeah, the lipo portfolio exactly like may that. not be able to provide yes yes Alone. so Many things that actually we can do on top of that 360 degree of the customers. So our big data outcome actually in the form of the API. Mm -hmm. Why well, it has to be in the API? Because when we interact with the customer, there could be unlimited customer touch point to call this API. It could be like the mobile apps as the smart customer touch point, or it could be the dashboard that we develop for our LiPo internal business. Mm -hmm. Could be anything, or even we can also like connect to the other industry from the different uh, business. Then how we can connecting each other using that that big data API. So that's why. Is it API ecosystem, right? It's not yes. one API, right? Or it's one API, one unified API for accessing all the backend data and services. Yeah, for, for example, like this, there are two type of the API that we develop. Number one is the API that belong to the customer 360 degree. So every attributes that attach to your profile, let's say, we can like convert it to the API, right? So later on, let's say uh, smart apps as part of customer touch point, for example, like OFO, we would like to engage with our customers. So meaning that the apps can just like designing their own like the business orchestration then calling specific api mm. by understanding let's say from the point of view or lo loyalty mm -hmm. or like product preference that you like so that then what kind of the offers that we need to push to the customer touch point channel using the ofo apps or even let's say like our supermarket have their own apps so the apps can also like <coughs> calling our api based on their data to understand what kind of the brand or the preference uh, product that they like. So later on in their apps, when the customer connects, it's going to be something that really personalized. So that's why it's in order to manage the futures like agility. So it's very important for us to deliver like this big data outcome in the form of the API. It scales too. Yeah, you know, there's definitely. not a lot of custom work. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about yep. connecting people and making sure yes. it works. Expose yes. an API and say, there it is. Yes. And then yes. different countries have, uh, on, in terms of privacy and the use of personally identifiable information, different countries and regions have their own different policies and regulations. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the European Union is fairly strict, mm -hmm. European Union, with GDPR coming along. The US has its own privacy mm -hmm. uh, 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 mandates. In Indonesia, are there equivalent privacy regulations or laws that would require, for example, you ask the customers to consent to particular uses of the data of their data that you're managing within your big data system? Uh, you know, that sits behind OVO. Is that something that you in your in your overall program that you? Yes, reflect? actually, uh, there are some uh, regulation in Indonesia, governed like by the government. Telco having their own like uh, regulation, but we are let's say like part of the fintech. Yes, there is a specific regulation, but regulation for the retail is not really that clear yet for now. But we put ourselves in the high restricted uh, regulation that we put in place as part of our data uh, protection, part of our uh, data governance compliance as well. Even though we do this kind of the monetization or like consol consolidating this data. There is no individual data that being shared outside the entity of the organization. Mm -hmm. Because let's say when we do the monetization, everything is done by system to system when we call the API. Mm -hmm. So there is no handoff for the customer individual data. Let's say even let's say like our uh, partner, FMCG, digital agency, or even like advertiser, future wise, they would like to call our API, what they can see about their, their target lead of the customers that they would like to connect is actually is not in the individual, individual level of the data. It's going to be in the aggregated format. 
So even though many segmentation that we can deliver, it's not going to expose every individual You have a lot of use cases that yes. you can handle yeah. because of the control yes. governance piece. Yep. Yep. How about, and that's just, by the way, that's fantastic, mm -hmm. and I know how hard it must be, the challenge, but you have it set up nicely. Now that it's set up with Informatica mm -hmm. and, and the work you're doing, how are you interfacing with developers? Because now you have the API. Mm -hmm. uh, is it just API based? Are you looking at containers, Kubernetes, cloud technologies? Are you guys looking at that down the road, or is that part of the, or is it just expose the API to the okay. developers? For today, that actually, Who's going to consume our API actually? Definitely it's going to be like the ecosystem of the LiPo internals, how the customer touch point can leverage the API. Then for the external, for like for example, like, like FMCG or digital agency, uh, when they call our API, usually it's like, they can like subscribe. So they could be like some kind of the business model is divine there. But once again, like I mentioned to you, let's say it's not going to reveal any individual customer information. But the thing is, how we deliver these API things, we develop our own API system. We develop our API gateway. In simple thing that actually about how to put the permission or grant the access of any kind of the digital channel when they consume our API and what kind of the subscription method. So, what we deliver for the big data is actually is not really into we investing a lot of technology in place for yeah. us to use. The thing that makes my team so excited about this transformation because we like to create something. So that's why we create our own API gateway. Yeah. We create some many like uh, analytic product mm. on top of the technology that we have today. So when they subscribe to the API, you're setting policy for the data that they can get and you're done. Yes, something like that. So you automated that. Yes. Cool, well, we see a lot of AI, any machine learning in your future? Are you guys doing any automation? How are you guys thinking about some of the tools we've been seeing here at the show around um, automation and AI, Claire? Um, are you tapping into any of the okay. goodness? Yes. <laughs> I believe everybody really like to talk about AI, right? Yeah, like that. <laughs> so you got APIs, you're yeah, good. You don't yeah. need any API. Many know. organizations when they really like, you know, implementing big data, sometimes they start jumping like, I need to start doing the AI things. <coughs> but from our point of view, yes, AI is very important. Definitely we, we will go there. But for now, what is important for us is how we really can bring the data to a single analytical platform, mm. developing the 360 degree customer profile, because we really need to understand our customer better than thinking about how we can connect with them, how we can like bring the new experience, and especially at the right time. And actually, let me break down AI, because I cover AI for Wikibon. It's such an amorphous topic, but I break it down to specific things like, for example, speech recognition for voice activated access to digital assistance that might be embedded mm -hmm. in mobile phones. Indonesia is a huge diverse country. It's an archipelago. You have many groups living under a unitary na national structure, but they speak different languages, they have different dialects. Do you use, or are you considering yes. speech recognition? How you would tailor speech recognition in a country that is so diverse as Indonesia? Is that some, something, an, an application of AI you're considering using? Uh, in, in terms of your user interface? Okay, for now we're not really into there yet because okay. you are definitely correct. So developing that kind of the library for like Indonesian because the different dialect, different accent, yeah. it's, it's kind of tough. So the AI things that we are looking for is actually is going to be like a product recommendation engine. Yes. Because you know, let's say, there are a lot of things on top of this customer 360 degree that we can do, right? Because meaning is going to open unlimited opportunity how I can engage to the customers, what kind of the right offer. Because there are a lot of brand owners like FMCG that they would like to connect. Mm -hmm like also like getting in touch, reach out our customers. So by, by developing this kind of the like product recommendation engine, let's say like using the typical machine learning, so we can understand when we introduce this thing, <coughs> customer like it, introduce that thing, they don't like it. Let me ask the next logical question there. It's such a big diverse country. 
Do you, in modeling the customer profile, are you able to encode cultural sensitivities? Once again, a very diverse country, there's probably things you can recommend in terms of products to some peoples that other people might find offensive or insensitive. Is that something that, in terms of modeling the customer, you take into uh, consideration? Yeah, can. It doesn't just apply to Indonesia, it applies mm. here too, or anywhere else yeah. where you have many people. Of, of course can to do that kind of the modeling, but what we're doing right now, let's say, once again, speaking about the uh, personalized offer, from that point of view, what we see is actually to the, uh, create the definition based on customer spending power first, buying power. Uh, we need to understand that these customers actually into this which level of the buying power. By under, understanding this kind of buying power level, then we really can understand that should we introduce this kind of the offers or not, because this is too expensive or not. Because customer spending uh, level can be also different. Let's say, when our customers spend in, let's say, like our supermarket, maybe it's going to be like medium spending level. But let's say when they spend ma their money to purchase the coffee, maybe it's regular basis, so it's more, 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 more spending. Could be like different spending. So we also need to learn this kind of thing because sometimes that the low spending or medium spending or high spending, sometimes it's not something that we put it into the average level for everything. Sometimes it could be different. So this is the thing that also like very exciting for us to understand yeah. this kind of this kind of the spending uh, uh, buy, buying power level. You're great to have you on the cube. Thanks for coming on. So I got to ask you one final question. <laughs> sure. I heard you were an honoree Informatica Innovation Award honoree. Congratulations. Thank you. What <laughs> advice would you have for your peers that mm. might want to aspire to get the award next okay. year? Okay. The thing is, our big data journey just start last year, really start from the zero. So when yesterday we got an award for the advanced uh, analytics, so actually what we really focus it on to do something that actually very simple. Some organization when they implementing big data, sometimes they would like to do everything in the phase one. So what we plan to do is actually, number one is how to bring the data, like very fast, then understand what kind of the value of the data, the data that we can bring to the organization. Our favorite one is that thing, developing the customer 360 degree profile. Because once you really understand your customer from many point of view, it's going to open unlimited opportunities how you can engage with your customers. It also opens another opportunity how you can bring another ecosystem to our business to engage with our customers. That, that one point of view is already like opening a lot of things, huge. So after that, thinking about what would be the next step. Of course that API is going to simplify your business in the future like you know, scale, agility and so on. So that's becoming our main focus mm -hmm. to allow us to deliver a lot of quick win, low, low hanging fruit at the same time. Yeah. So I think that that's the thing that, that makes us that really can within a short period of time can deliver like a lot of things. Fir Shanti, Chief Data Officer at Lipo Digital Group. Thanks for sharing your Anytime. stories. The Cube, we're here. Thank you so live much. Yeah, <laughs> in Las Thank Vegas. You so much. They're going to be bonding here, talking about uh, all the greatness going on there. This is the Cube here in Las Vegas. Stay with us for continuing day two coverage of Informatica World 2018. We'll be right back.